Hello, this is Klaus from QuantUX, and in this tutorial I will show you how to use the data binding feature in QuantUX. Let's create a new prototype. We give it a name and we choose the iPhone 6 as the screen factor. We click on OK and we start the prototyping. We create now a very simple prototype. It consists out of two screens. The first screen contains a text box and a button, and the button is linked to the second screen. Now we select the text box and click on Add Data Binding. The Data Binding dialog pops up. We create a new variable. We give it a simple name, for instance, name. We click on In and Out and OK to create the data binding. Now we copy the input field to the second screen. If we launch the simulator and enter a value, for instance, Test, and click on the button to navigate to the next screen, you can see that the value of the screen was copied actually to the second screen. Let's add another widget, for instance, a radio box. We create a radio box and we customize its options to have a set of colors the user can choose from. Now we create a new data binding for the radio box this time. We click on Add Data Binding, the dialog pops up, and we create a new variable, for instance, color. Now we add a second text field to the second screen. This text box will be also linked to the color variable that we have just created. If we start the simulator now, you can actually see that if we add a value, for instance test2, and select the yellow color and click on the button, that the yellow color was also copied. Now we create a logic flow that interacts with the variable that we have just created. To do so, we remove the link and we add a new screen. One screen we make blue and one screen we make for the other colors. Once we have created both screens, we add a logic element. First, we wire the click button to the logic element and afterwards we wire the logic element to both screens. Now we configure the rule that navigates to the blue screen. In the rule pop-up, we select data binding and we select the color variable. We select an operator equals and we give it a value, in this case blue. You can see that also the description and the properties panel was updated. If we launch now the simulator and select blue and click on click me, we go to the blue screen. If we select the yellow option in the radio list, we will go to the other screen because there is no rule matching the yellow value. Now we create another example. We use a progress bar and a slider. After we have added both elements to the screen, we configure them to use the same variable. In the simulator, you can see now that every change to the slider is immediately propagated to the progress bar. Let's bind the variable to a label. To do so, we create a label, for instance an H3 headline label, we place it next to the slider and we also link it to the variable that we have just created, in this case the progress variable. If we now launch the simulator, we will see that the changes in the slider are not only propagated to the progress bar, but also to the label. As a last example, let's use the camera widget. The camera widget allows you to upload pictures from your hard disk or, if you're on a mobile phone, to open the camera. We create the widget and we create a second screen. On the second screen, we add the camera image widget. Last, we connect both widgets to a new variable called image. If we start the simulator, we can click on the icon to open an upload dialog. We can select the picture of a dog and once we upload it, the simulator will navigate to the second page and show the uploaded image. This was our tutorial about data binding. If you have questions, just post them in the comments.